Hey guys, my name is Kaylin Ashcroft. Thanks for watching another episode of Cashcroft TV. Today we're going to be doing more history, uh, specifically on Timoleon and Aemilius Paulus from ancient Greece and Rome, respectively. Um, this is kind of a cool part in Plutarch's lives where I believe um, Plutarch starts getting a certain purpose in his writing and starts to really hit his full stride. He has the quote at the beginning of these two biographies. It was for the sake of others that I first commenced writing biographies, but I find myself proceeding and attaching myself to it for my own. The virtues of these great men serving me as a sort of looking glass in which I may see how to adjust and adorn my own life. And I kind of feel this too, and I hope you feel the same way by watching some of these videos or just studying history on your own. As you read about and follow these great uh, men and, and women as well, you sort of start to adopt their characteristics and outlook and I think you'll and I at least have start to see benefits in other facets of life um, he also has this other cool quote um, I was gonna mention later but I guess I'll mention it now uh, man is not a vessel to be filled but a fire to be kindled so I guess when like watching these videos or any sort of history don't like I know I forgot to mention the dates on some of the previous individuals but don't memorize the dates like it doesn't do you any good to know that plutarch was born in 46 a.d versus like 60 a.d it really doesn't do you any benefit but to sort of try to get into his mind and sort of adopt his characteristics and beliefs will do do you a lot uh, more good or at least it does me a lot more good um i bet even if you ask plutarch what dates some of these individuals were born he probably had no idea but is a great understanding of them and that's probably more important so without further ado we'll start with uh Timoleon. sorry there's no quotes on this he actually doesn't have any real quotes to, uh, worth noting but he's a very very interesting individual so he came from a very high-ranking family um he had an older brother called uh Timophanes, um who was who was quite a bit older and very much the opposite of Timoleon, kind of like a Cain and Abel situation. Timoleon was very uh, soft-tempered, and he uh, despised tyrants and wicked men, whereas his older brother was very greedy, very aggressive, and um, not as patriotic. He was very into um, hiring mercenaries and such. But uh, at one point, there's this battle uh, with against Argos and Cleon, Cleonia, I guess it might be pronounced. Um, and his older brother, Timophanes, is um, he's the leader of the cavalry, and is in um, the they're losing the battle, and Timophanes is about to about to die, and his younger brother Timoleon runs into the battle. Uh, taking a lot of beatings, a lot of bruises, dodging some javelin throws, and saves his brother, um, which is kind of a testament to how much he really cared for his brother to put his own life at risk, and kind of testament to how uh, brave he also was. Um, but yeah, so Corinth, which is the, the city they're from, which is in Greece, is uh, worried that they're going to lose the battle, so they they uh, elect Timophanes to be the, the general or the guardian of the town. He starts hiring a lot of mercenaries and becomes very tyrannical. He, um, he kills a lot of powerful people in the town and has a lot of executions. Uh, Timoleon is very against this because he's always been against uh, wicked men and tyr tyrants. Um, so he approaches him with two of his friends, and uh, Timofanes gets violent with him. So it's said that Timoleon steps back, and his two friends uh, kill his brother. Um, but Timoleon is credited for killing his brother. Uh, many people are happy with this for uh, ridding him of his tyrant. Of his tyrant. Some, Some are not as happy, uh, most specifically his mother. Uh, so, so he goes back to his mother's house, house and she, um, she's, she's very upset and completely kicks him out of the house, so Timoleon is very human of him, becomes very, very depressed, he tries starving himself to death, um, but his friends convince himself not to do so, um, so he keeps eating, but he 
he walks around for about 20 years just aimlessly and very depressed. Um, you know, he killed his own brother, perhaps for good reason, and that's kind of um, how, it's, how society proceeded. But his mother disowned him. He was very much alone in the world and kind of unsure of his purpose. But uh, he's very lucky because eventually Sicily, which is, um, um, yeah, in modern-day Italy, uh, is, has this tyrant called Dionysius II. His father, Dionysius I, is one of the best, uh, uh, or most famous examples of a pure evil tyrant. But Dionysius II is, uh, is starting to lose the fight, and there's an opportunity for Sicily to perhaps go back into, uh, or become a democracy, or adopt another tyrant. So there's also this guy named uh, Hisatas, who also wants to become a tyrant. So he's got a bunch of mercenaries from uh, Carthage hired up so he can enter into Sicily and take the, take the land. So Corinth decides that they're going to help them out and try to uh, eradicate this tyranny, both Dionysius and fend off Hisatas. Um, the capital of Sicily is Syracuse, um, which was a pretty big city at the time. So he is fortunately uh, elected to be general of Corinth and a few other Greek um, individual uh, states to go and help them. And um, yeah, so he sets on sail. It's Plutarch says, and I, I, I'm probably misquoted um, properly, but uh, those who do not have a direction are at the mercy of any sort of compliment or any sort of uh, insult that will be thrown at them. So it's kind of like once uh, Timoleon got working, got busy, his depression went away and he started um, becoming much more fulfilled. And I think that's true for like for like anyone. If you're busy, you're not going to be... You're not gonna be as depressed, but you'll also, um, yeah, it's just good to good to stay busy. So yeah, he heads off to Syracuse, and he is very fortunate in battle. Um, Plutarch does criticize both Timoleon and Emilius Paulus with being very fortunate. The, there's a hailstorm at one point that uh, prevents um, Hisatas from. Uh, well, really hurts his troops and leads to Timoleon winning that battle. Uh, eventually, he manages to squeeze Dionysius to one town, and Dionysius II takes refuge back in Corinth. Uh, eventually, though, he Hisatas fails because Carthage, his mercenaries, bail on him and don't show up, and uh, um, Timoleon manages to save Sicily and Syracuse. So, back when he's at Syracuse, you know, he is very against tyrants. Some criticize him of being a tyrant himself, but he established somewhat democratic ideals in Syracuse. He he attempted to rebuild the the city, and he, at that time, since there had been a huge stream of tyrants and a bunch of war, they were had a population deficit. So he he um, promoted immigration from uh, Greece to. Sic uh, to uh, Sicily and Syracuse and made an effort to rebuild the city. Um, eventually he becomes blind and the people of Sicily still call upon him to um, for advice and whatnot and he often would do so. Uh, yeah. the people uh, Once he dies, the people of Sicily pay for his funeral showing how thankful they are of the work he did for them. Uh, as his, their sort of savior and kind of proof that he wasn't really a tyrant. They were not forced to bury him. They were not forced to keep accepting his wisdom. He really did free them. Yeah. I guess we'll go on to Emilius Paulus. Um, he, oh, yeah. Uh, well, I guess the dates are up here, so I don't need to mention it. Save myself the trouble that time. Okay. So, Emilius Paulus. So... He was born from a very powerful family as well. It's kind of, it's hard to be, there are very few actual individuals in this book who didn't come from uh, great powerful families. Some of them came from more than less, but he came from a pretty fat, powerful family. But more importantly, I guess, and we'll get to it later, his biggest influence was the amount of children who he had, his, his children, his, such as one of them, 
uh, Scipio Africanus was the one who ultimately defeated Hannibal. That was very important. But um, yeah, so Scipio, I mean, sorry, Aemilius Paulus was very different from uh, Romans at the time. He was very into studying Greek learning. Um, he was not very into the practicing oration um, for, I don't know, various reasons. I guess he didn't he didn't really want to be a suck up. It's also said that he didn't salute, embrace, and entertain the vulgar that was common Roman. So I guess like everyone in Rome at the time would really just suck up to their superiors and eventually get high ranks, whereas he would kind of do his own thing and just try to perform as best as possible and be as noble as possible. Um, he, unlike many of these other uh, heroes, I guess we can call them, struggled in his political career. He he uh, he became aedile relatively quickly and then praetor after performing quite well on the battlefield, but it took him a while to be to become consul. He became consul twice ultimately, but the first time it took him a while, sort of similar to Timoleon. Timoleon had 20 years off where he was just depressed, but I imagine this must have been a hard time for Emilius Paulus because he knew he was w worthy of great things, but it just took him a long time to really get there. Um, but fortunately, he is elected consul when uh, Perseus the Great, uh, no, not Perseus the Great, Perseus of Macedon, um, who is uh, Alexander the Great's pro um, ancestor, uh, tries invading uh, Rome, and he is... He manages to fend them off with great glory. Um, it is it was one of the most famous processions in all of Rome. When he arrived back, he managed to capture Perseus and his sons and uh, bring them through Ro ancient Rome at the time. Um, Perseus really doesn't want to um, be put in front of all the Romans. He's worried that it'll be shameful. But... Uh, to paraphrase him, um, Emilius Paulus tells him that like you can you can always kill yourself, but it is important to um, be humble in defeat and do the walk of shame. Like it's um, granted, it's kind of not saying a lot because Emilius Paulus never had to do it specifically, but it's indicative of his uh, belief system. Um, but unfortunately, he's also faced with just as much unluckiness as he is faced with luck on the battlefield. Uh, he has this quote, I, who never feared anything that was human, have always dread of fortune as faithless and inconsistent. I still expected some change and reflux of things. So four days before they win the battle with uh, Perseus and three days after, two of his sons die on each respective date. And he is very, very upset about this, but Plutarch is quick to note that he managed to handle this... Uh, this upset better than Timoleon but once again it's probably because he was busy at the time and managed to stay busy if he had been back in the part of his career where he was a failing politician and couldn't become consul and this happened to him it would have been much more difficult but yeah so he had two of his sons he donated to other families it was kind of strange thing we don't really have that in uh, um, at least yeah, modern world, people don't really donate children, but I don't know, could be possible. Um, yeah, he donated one of his sons, Scipio, Scipio Africanus, who ultimately defeats Hannibal. Uh, so he's a direct descendant of Emilius Paulus. Scipio and Africanus, supposedly there was, Plutarch wrote a life about him, but uh, it has been lost, and it's kind of a shame, because he is one of the greatest... Uh, just greatest warlords and greatest leaders in history. Um, yeah, I guess that's about it. Uh, he, one of the things he did, and for all of his children, he made sure that they had great Greek training, uh, which was kind of um, a throwback. Rome came a, a bit after ancient Greece and kind of a testament to his, his appreciation for the old Greek statesmen, and that's probably why Plutarch chose to compare these two. Uh, great uh, civilizations so yeah he trained them in grammar logic rhetoric horse training and dog training as well yeah so i guess on to comparison um yeah plutarch notes out they're v both very lucky um they they were very fortunate on the battlefield 
through hailstorms, through uh, being elected or put into their positions at the right time. Um, had they not been in this case, they would have uh, obviously been in a much more tough emotional state. Um, in terms of contrast, um, they were... Um, Emilius Paulus accepted nothing from um, any of the any of his victories. He always gave any of the rewards and trophies to his people, whereas Timoleon is um, criticized for ultimately taking a house and a state, uh, which is granted him by the people of Syracuse, which, which I, think I think is kind of a low blow. blow. Like, sure, like he, he took a house. It's not like he was being a tyrant, and he was very against tyrants. I don't, I don't think, think it's too bad, but Plutarch, Plutarch seems to think he was less glorious in this matter. He says there was no, there's no honor in accepting these rewards, but he says the supremest virtue is shown in not wanting what might be fairly taken. So in that regard, he um, puts Emilius Paulus in higher acclaim. Um, he also criticizes Timoleon for not getting over his failure um, with his mother after killing his brother. Once again, I think he kind of contradicts himself when he says that uh, people are less likely to be um, upset or uh, depressed when um, they uh, are focused on a certain task. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's Timoleon and Emilius Paulus. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you watch the next video. Thanks so much. Bye.